Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. We are back. It's Lee Gunlock, Eric, and Mark here with you beauties today as we continue. What is this, round four? Round five of the Swiss stage? It's hard to keep up when the rounds are different than the days. That's the one thing. Uh, it's hard to keep track of what's what in this format. I'll say that. <laughs> it is a little tricky keeping track of it. I usually am just focused on what is the end situation from the day that we're at. Are you in eliminations? Are you moving, trying to move up? Or are we in the middle zone? And that's exactly where we found ourselves today, looking at Dan Juan Kia versus Gam, as well as slide me up a little bit of that KT Rolster versus LNG. Yeah, winner's side, the two and one squad's LNG plan for that quarterfinal berth. And, you know, this series, it started looking real good for KT Rolster, uh, the early game in that first game, and LNG. It's like they've been training against JDG all season because multiple times in this series, one single play, and it's not even a huge advantage. Maybe a pick here, a bonus turret here, a two for one, and that's enough for a squad like LNG to take a game over and get out of control. It's insane that a squad like LNG exists where there is just the smallest of windows, the smallest of opportunities, and they're blasting the doors down and taking everything possible to try and explode and take the lead in the game. You saw that in game one. You saw that later in the series as well. And as you mentioned, you saw that all summer long against the rest of the LPL. LNG coming in clutch. Big time performance from Mr. Gala to start out the series. Yeah, a little 8-0-3 on the Aphelios. And he just... They couldn't kill him. Time and time again, they tried to kill him. They threw everything, every engage to try and take him down. And he almost always has to sever him in a team fight and is unable to die. But uh, uh, yeah, great performance out of him. And we got to shout out the play of the day. The escape from Zika in a 1v4. This is an example. It's not even a kill going over to LNG, but you're getting flashes and ultis burned out of KT. Four guys running around to kill the Jacks. I'm no expert businessman, but that ain't the trade that you gotta be looking to make. This cost from KT was way too high to try and secure this on Zika. Try to secure it to kill the Jacks. They cannot get it done. My man is living. And there is the penalty then for the expenditures on the side of KT. There is that counter punch that comes through. It's crazy because there was avenues in this game. There were moments that you felt like it was certainly KT's controller. It was more so KT's opportunity to direct the game into where they wanted it to finish. And it just never came through. And you waited long enough. You let it happen where there was that small window. And bam, LNG makes their counter punch and pushes on through and captures game one. The only thing missing from that escape for Zika is... You gotta be spamming emotes after that. Come on, four guys try and kill you, you barely escape. You gotta be spamming everything you got. Uh, yeah, really letting us down compared to the rest of the LPL and the emote spam that we expect to see in plays like that. Way to not be toxic, Zika. Like, come on, bro. Uh, game two, KT does bounce back. This is an immaculate performance out of the Talia for BDD and the combo of this Talia, Kaisa, and Nautilus just knocking down CC was absolutely lethal. And this is, I think, by far the most effective we've seen Talia be at this event so far. We have seen many a uh, Talia not fill up to Jungle what is or mid lane. Take your pick, exactly. Fill up to that expectation to what you think this champion should be able to deliver, where she's in the meta, all these type of things, and what she can do for your team if played right, if 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 paired up properly. BDD's execution is pinpoint in this match, making sure that everything is going right and spreading that wealth the way that only a Talia is able to get through and get around the map. Look at your boy aiming as well down in the bottom lane to pick up big time damage for KT. Yes, this is an easy. KT victory to to tie things up and send us to that all important game three. Yeah, that was the classic LCK, more slow pace, just completely starving out uh, your opponent, which is what KT did. Yeah, that decisive game three again. Good early game from KT. They looked in control and won. 2-0 dragon fight just completely swings the momentum and this one did feel like even though KT was getting advantages early the gold lead was barely moving and LNG was just waiting to burst through that's exactly what they did and I mean honestly you let 
Kaisa through for Gala in game three. You know this is going to be a disaster, but a full late game comp for KT and the game's over 24 minutes. So. Yeah, well, the problem with running a full late game comp is, well, you got to first get to late game and part mm. of getting to late game with a late game composition is not fighting, is not engaging, is just staying alive until that late game trying to keep it as even as possible maybe a slight advantage and then bam the scaling turns up and there you have your power and that's how you take it through apparently kt got antsy they had a hot date they had a, a reservation at the hot pot at the k barbecue whatever my man they had to make sure that they were getting out of there they got out of there all right, but certainly not in the way that you were hoping to get out of there. You're picking an Orn. You're picking, you know, these mega scaling options. You've got the Aphelios as well. Maybe slide into the Azir into that equation. And you're still trying to take these early fights. That was not in the cards. KT, what are you doing? I think biggest thing that was noticeable after this series. Number one, coming into this event, I think most people, almost everyone, would be putting Keen ahead of Zika in terms of top lane power rankings, but not even just this series. You look at the tournament as a whole, and Zika has been outperforming Keen on every champion in every single aspect. That's Zika stepping up, and Keen not living up to the hype and expectations that we have for him. Uh, a disappointing series from Keen, someone that has shown us the type of form, never mind the history of his career to deliver in these type of moments, to be someone you can count on. And unfortunately for KT Rolster, they couldn't count enough from Mr. Keen and the contributions in this series. And then on the flip side, as you mentioned, Zika, it's kind of this thing that we've seen in the LPL, this emergence of obviously the elite, elite top laners. And I'm not throwing Zika into that category quite just yet, but we've seen that this is a player that has to play and is groomed against all these other top level top laners in the LPL. And if you got to hang in that type of category, you certainly got enough of the juice to make it matter. And we saw it today in the series. Your boys got the juice. We also saw a sprinkle of a new 80 carry pick. I say new. Sivir is not a new champion or anything <laughs> exciting. But we saw it LNG KT. We got it in the D-plus GAM series before that, which was a little bit less contested. Obviously, the LCK fourth seed were massive favorites heading into this one. And all Showmaker and Def did was combine to go 24, 1, and 19. Yeah, that's one single death between the two of them across both games. I don't need to see the rest of it. I'm going to circle that one. That's the key problem right <laughs> there. Those two players having that type of record, that little amount of deaths, there's no way that you're coming out on top at that point in time. Showmaker and Death get to do what they want to do out there on the Rift. It's game over. Easy as that. Even for teams that are better than the Gigabyte Marines. So this was certainly uh, a walk in the park is, is certainly saying maybe a little bit too much, right? For a side like D plus Kia, but a very convincing win, very controlled win from this side. And uh, I mean, truthfully, a lot of the guys didn't have to uh, really pop off. A lot of this was really played through that bottom lane. Kellen, a couple of Rel games. The 2v2 straight up, him and Deft were just getting uh, 2v2 kills without Canyon even showing up. And then if they were close fights, well, there's Canyon waiting in the bush to clean it up. Yeah, and even, even the signature Levi Nocturne cannot be what turns around this series. It was done. It was dusted. Canyon taking what he wanted. This was a D plus Kia who I think at this point in time, a lot of people are looking at them and, and kind of the run that they've had at this Worlds and building themselves back up now being pushed to the very brink. Getting a matchup like this against Gam, kind of a, a little bit of a step up, maybe compared to some of the other matches, is a good stepping stone to see where this D plus Kia team is. And to hopefully, for them, round into form where you are competing with the better teams at this event. So. Yeah, now BDS um, into Gam. It's going to level up quickly unless they, you know, get very lucky and draw Fnatic in the next round. Then it's a pretty easy path to top eight for them. But if it's any of the other LPL and LCK teams, obviously, curious to see what level D-plus is actually at. Because I, I don't see them stomping Weibo or KT in 50 minutes. Yeah, and I think the thing with D-plus Kia that is so tough is a lot of people we want to be seeing in a best of five scenario. And then you're starting to think of, oh, well, what about the history of someone like Showmaker, like Canyon, like Deft, where they are in a series and you start to develop your own meta within that series and the picks that they can pay, take out, all that type of stuff. It's all there. 
on paper. The execution hasn't completely always validated that on paper result res- research that we've seen about D plus Kia this year. And one last shout out for GAM at this event. I think absolutely VCS fans should be proud of the level that they put up, obviously highlighted by beating Team Liquid. And now we're hearing that even before that series, Levi was incredibly sick. The rest of the team were getting hooked up to IVs and they're playing still able to take down TL when they're feeling that badly. A huge shout out to GAM. I don't want to talk about what that means for Team Liquid type of situation. Yes, focus on the positive. Mega props to GAM and what they've done. Hey, we were harsh on them. We were right on them all the way through the play-in stage, and I think rightfully so. But they absolutely responded and put together that effort that I think themselves and the rest of the VCS and the global community can be proud of and say, you know what? Good to see you, GAM. Good effort. Come back next year. And we're... Again, proving why there should be two seeds from the BCS at these international events because Team Wales did perform well also. So the Miracle Run continues. One more best of three for Deft and the boys to get back into that top eight. But as we said, the competition going to level up. We got T1, BLG, NRG, G2. They kept the real tasty ones for the Saturday mark. Oh, yes, they did. I mean, it's not like these games that we've had the last couple of days have been bad or not important or anything else. But yes, sir, re these are the juiciest ones that we had from this last batch of whatever we did with the draw. Yes, we are getting into it. T1 versus BLG, Zeus versus Giga Bin, the MSI rematch for T1. Redemption awaits. And then on the other side, G2 versus NRG, the Titanic clash of the Atlantic, NA versus EU. This time, it really matters. These are the two that you care about the most. Let's see what you got. Best in the West title on the line. Even if NRG somehow wins, I'm not giving them that title. G2 G2 just had a bad day. That's the only way they're winning. But we'll be back after the weekend to recap all those games. That's it today for League Unlocked. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.